October 13th, 3.02pm, Wright & Co. Law Offices. You know, I'm glad we found the urn and all, but poor Mr. Delight got arrested again. Well, supposedly Mr. Delight was in the CEO's office when the murder occurred. No way, Jose, I don't buy it. But the one who proved that Mr. Delight was there was Mr. Nick himself. At least, from what I can understand. Looks like you did too good of a job this time, Nick. Um, uh, well, how about we get started looking into the KB security murder? I think I'm gonna head back to Curane Village for a little while, if that's alright. Sure, but why? I'm gonna bring the sacred urn back and have some people take a look at it. Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll go with... No, Mystic Maya, you should stay here. I want you two to spend some special quality time together, full of love and happiness. Pearls is so caught up in her fantasy, she forgot there's a murder to solve. Sacred urn given to Pearls. Now remember, no fighting, okay? Aww. She's adorable. She's gone. Okay, Nick, time to get going on this murder investigation. So, what do we do now? Isn't it obvious we should get out there and investigate the murder? Well, first we need to find out exactly where KB security is located. Hey, why don't we ask Miss Delight? She should know. Besides, I want to ask some stuff about motorcycles. Motorcycles? You're not thinking of getting one, are you? I'm not the same little Maya who used to be happy with her dinky little bike, Nicky boy. <sighs> Speaking of asking around, I've got a few questions of my own for Mr. Delight. Okay, well let's make sure to go to the detention centre too. Uh, sacred urn? You must be relieved we got the sacred urn back, huh? You bet. But there's something a little different about it. Don't... at me. <laughs> it's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, take a look at this. It clearly says I am on the urn in the poster. But the urn we got back says army, like it always used to. Oh yeah, you're right. Plus, the vase has pink splotches on it now. I'm sure they weren't there before. Maya doesn't know, but one year ago, when the urn was broken, the repairer accidentally turned Mystic Army's name into I Am. And that repairer was one mechanically unskilled little pearls. I mean, she put it back together pretty well, considering she's mechanically unskilled. I, I was pretty impressed. But still... I don't remember ever seeing pink splotches on it. Is it possible that urn is a fake? I'm sure Pearls will find out about that once she gets back to Curane Village. Yeah, I suppose. Now that I think about it, Maya hasn't been back to Curane Village in a long time. So... I guess people still go to Kuren Village to do their training, right? Yup, if you want to become spirit medium, you need to undergo severe training. So, why haven't you been training lately, Maya? Well... Lately I've been thinking of heading to a channeling dojo to do just that. A channeling dojo, huh? Sounds pretty serious, whatever that is. If you're gonna train, you have to be serious, otherwise real tragedies can happen. Is what happened last year still bothering you? Oh, That murder in her village, it happened because the power of channeling was misused. Not, not really? I mean, but that's not really what happened. When a medium uses the Curane technique, she temporarily loses her own will. So when an especially strong spirit is summoned, the spirit medium can get taken over and even forced to commit terrible crimes. What's worse, in those cases, the spirit medium has no memory of what happened. In all cases. Like, the, the spirit medium never has any memory of what happened. Y y y how would you even control any spirit, regardless of their strengths? Like, they literally replace you w while you're channeling. Hmm. Like, that was an explicit plot point in the first one, that, you know, Maya was didn't exist while she was channeling and she had a dream which meant she did exist, right? <sighs> that murder. It wasn't your fault, Maya. You do know that, don't you? 
I suppose not, but it wasn't your fault at all. Like, it had nothing to do with your channeling whatsoever. Babe. Oh, sweetie. I guess I'm still a bit shaken up. That's all. It sounds like being the master of Q-Rain is going to be a heavy responsibility. Okay, uh, let's drop by Damasque's hideout. Jazz hands? No, there isn't, the star isn't there. I don't need to do jazz hands. <laughs> October 13th. Mask Damasque's hideout. Oh, Nikki boy. Maya. Mr. Light. All I wanted to do was help my dear Ronnie. Yeah, but I guess I ended up hurting his case. Don't say that, Nick. She doesn't need your help beating herself up. Hey, Nikki boy, please, please help Ronnie. He's not a killer, I swear. My Ronnie wouldn't hurt a fly. All right, I'll poke around and see what I can find out. Really? Are you serious? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. I knew asking for your help was the right thing to do. I, I don't know what I can do to help anymore. I had no idea Mr. Light had such a vulnerable side. Listen carefully, Nikki boy. My Ronnie would never, ever kill anyone. It's just not in him. I don't think he would either, Nick. Yeah, but you have to admit he's got a bit of a temper to him. It's not that hard to imagine him just snapping and screaming, Please die! He would never say that. Anyway, Mr. Light, he might not be a killer, but he's still going around saying that he's a thief. I already told you, that's just a fantasy for him. And Mr. Light, I hate to say it, but... You're the one living in a fantasy world. What? How dare you say that to me, Nikki boy? I know everything about my Ronnie. We don't have any secrets between us. Ronnie isn't the thieving type. He's so honest that he wouldn't even sneak a nap. Oh. He's so honest that he wouldn't even steal a glance. A thief? Ha! The very idea. Hmm. I guess I just don't get it. Huh? Get what? I just can't understand how they can be so different, and yet be such a happy couple. Yeah, they sure are different. Come on now, Nikki boy. It's not that mysterious, is it? It was love at first sight. For me, anyway. What? F for you? I hate these kinds of people more than anything. Um, you mean Ace Detectives? No, I'm fine with Ace Detectives. Oh, so then you must mean thieves. No, they're alright too. I just hate thieves that pretend to be ace detectives. <laughs> and she's right, thieves are pretty great. There's nothing I hate more than cowardly men. Big mood. <laughs> By the way, why did you go to Detective Atme's office anyway? Well, as the trial went on, I started to get more and more anxious. I went there to try to find out more about the real criminal. The real criminal? Yes, obviously the real Mask Damasque is not my Ronnie, right? Y yeah? And Detective Atme knew more about Mask Damasque than anyone else. They mentioned him on the Great People Around Town segment on TV. So then, you went there to ask him some questions? That's right, I'll do whatever it takes to save my man. His secretary said, The ace detective isn't in right now. But I forced my way past her and into his hideout. I wouldn't exactly call that office of his a hideout. That bag was sitting right there on top of the table. Oh yeah, we saw that bag there yesterday too. There's nothing lower than someone who would try to pin a crime on someone else. Mr. Light, do you know about KB security? Don't be silly, of course I do. That's where my Ronnie works. So she thinks he still works there, huh? And yet, according to what we heard today... Come on, don't tell me you didn't know. Ron Delight was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. Ron quit. He doesn't work there anymore. Or he got fired. Like, like God, I didn't actually say why he doesn't work there anymore. It looks like Mr. Light doesn't know. KB security is only about 20 minutes away. By motorcycle, that is. Larry told me it takes 30 minutes by car. Well, I have to admit I tend to fly pretty fast on my bike. To make it to KB security that fast, are you sure you aren't literally flying? 
Why don't I give you a ride sometime? Or better yet, how about now? Um, uh, no, I'll pass the thanks. <laughs> Why don't you just tell us where it is and we'll go ourselves? <laughs> what a scaredy cat you are, Nick. Mr. Light told us the location of KB security. Okay, let's head over there right away, Nick. I want to keep talking. <laughs> um, so was it really love at first sight when you first met Mr. Delight? Well, maybe not at first sight, but Ronnie saved my life. Saved your life? I was at work one day when two robbers suddenly rushed in. Well, I'm not the kind to just curl into a little ball in a corner, so I fought back. R robbers Yes, they took me hostage. I was so frightened. They were both carrying these huge knives and I I broke down into tears. She looks so happy. Why are you so happy? That sounds... Uh, like I'm trying to use a tone that matches her expression and it doesn't really fit the dialogue. Hmm. Yeah, I would too if I were in that situation. Oh, I think I get it. Did Mr. Delight come running to save you? Yes, exactly! I remember he looked so handsome in that guard uniform of his. He went right up to those two knife-wielding robbers and screamed in their faces. Please stop it! He screamed. I could see the robbers' faces turn pale. Why is only one of them wearing a ski mask? That high-pitched shriek of his does have a surprisingly strong effect on people. Then, crying and swinging his arms like crazy, he attacked the two robbers. All by himself, he came to save me, a total stranger, all by himself. He was so scared that he was crying and shaking, but he still risked his life for me. Wow, that's a great story. Yes, he may not look it, but in a tough situation, there's no one better. That's why I fell in love with him like I did. <laughs> that's so romantic. I'd fall in love too, I guess. Oh, Phoenix. I hope Edgeworth comes to save your life like that, that would be really sweet. Nick, I hope you'll do the same for me if I ever get taken hostage. With Maya, that possibility always seems to loom in the not-so-distant future. I mean, she did get taken hostage, that has already happened. That that was a few cases ago. Okay, uh, we're done talking to you. Goodbye, Miss Mr. Delight. Uh, we are gonna go to the office at KB Security. October 13th, KB Security, CEO's office. So I guess this is where it all went down, huh? The walls in here look thick, just like you'd expect in a CEO's office. What has that got to do with anything? Hey, it's you guys. Oh, it's Detective Gumshoe. Today was a real train wreck for you guys, huh? Sure was, pal. That prosecutor made real fools out of us. Yeah, I feel for you. Wow, that's not like you at all. I thought you'd be more like, Oh, that was great, you guys got what you deserved, pal. <laughs> or something to that effect. D do I really sound like that to you, pal? If the gumshoe fits. Um, well, anyway. The point is I can tell when someone puts their heart into their jobs. And I can sympathize when things don't go your way. Sometimes I feel like wrong is the only way things go for us detectives. Wow, I had no idea Detective Gumshoe was such a nice guy. Now if this little love fest is over, maybe we can start investigating. Okay, so... Uh, there's a couple of things to look at here. We want to look at... Over here, I believe. This rope. You think it fell out of the safe when it was opened? I don't think so. So, you mean... Yeah, I think this string shows where and how the corpse was lying. Y y y you mean... The victim... He, he was killed by being crushed by the safe door? She, she can't be serious, can she? Oh. Check out this big thick binder here. Leave the heavy lifting to me, Nick. Reading a file isn't exactly backbreaking work, just a little hard on the eyes. Ah! What did you find out, Nick? This file, it's not about any sort of security operations or anything. This huge file is all about Mask to Mask A. It's full with inf info on him. What? What kind of info? It's filled with incredibly detailed information about his methods in the crime scenes. Hey Nick, look at the last page. It's a list. Let's see. T 
Tear of Eminon, $100,000. This looks like a list of all the treasures that Master Masque stole. So then, $100,000 is the value of the stolen item? I don't know, that number sounds kind of low to me. I think I'd better secretly make a copy of this list. Kane's list added to the court record. Yeah, that's pretty important, we do need that. Uh, I think we also want to look at the safe itself. Wow, this safe is unbelievable! I bet four pearls would fit in there. And it's got a bunch of... <coughs> a bunch of doohickeys attached to it. It's pretty amazing, alright. Motion sensors, heat sensors, weight sensors... Hey Nick, come on, let's open it and take a look. If I broke into one of these, wouldn't that set me down the path to Hoodlumville? Hoodlumville? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh... Oh, there's a button here. Let's see. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> hey, cut it out. Don't press that. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And any Detective Gumshoe could jump like that. What is that button anyway? It's an emergency buzzer. It says it right there on the panel. Oops, you're right. It's written right there. Nick, how many times have I told you to read the instructions first? This alarm's connected to the basement guard room. It's used to summon security up here. Really? And it's possible on the night of the crime. Ooh, so when the CEO was attacked, do you think that maybe he pressed the buzzer? Yeah, I thought about that, so I asked around down there. But they said that the buzzer never went off that night. Also, we couldn't find any fingerprints on the buzzer. Mr. Bullard, the victim, wasn't wearing any gloves, by the way. Just so you know. Hmm. I think we better go and talk to that guard about this emergency buzzer. Add to the court record. Let's talk to Gumshoe before we do that. Detective Gumshoe, tell us what you know about the murder. Um, okay. But the thing is, I'm really not supposed to. Hey, come on. What about how we put our hearts into our work? Things are really working against us right now, and we need help. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Just don't start crying on me, okay, pal? Okay, I won't cry on you, pal. The victim's name is Kane Bullard. He was the CEO of KB Security, and a pretty big fella in his own right. His corpse was discovered at 9 this morning. His estimated time of death was 1 in the morning on October 12th. The cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. Probably an object in this room. It happened at exactly the same time that Master Damasque was stealing the urn, huh? Autopsy report added to the court record. So, why did it take almost an entire day to discover the body? There's a good explanation for that one. Bullard's body was stashed away inside that safe. Safe? Well, it is pretty big. Nobody had heard from him, and when they opened the safe this morning, out he came. Oh, so the body fell out. That white string must be the shape from when he fell out. I think we still need some more information about Mr. Billiard. Maybe you could start by getting the man's name right. So, um, what happened to Mask to Maske? He's at the detention center screaming like a madman. Investigate me again, he keeps yelling. Uh, no, no, I didn't mean him. He's not the real thief anyway, right? Oh, you mean that detective- that detective at me? <laughs> Oh, that was great! That guy got what he deserved! Ho <laughs> ho Now that's the detective I know and love. Think about it, Atme was always around when a calling card showed up, but he always mysteriously disappeared when the heists took place. I was hiding at the crime scene. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard. That's how you just knew he was the thief. That would explain how he was able to retrieve the stolen item he keeps bragging about. Yeah, he just did that to make himself look like a great detective, that's all. There's this one thing I can't figure out about his first heist. His first heist? Yeah, the Tear of Eminon case. There was a witness on that one. A witness? Here, I saved the newspaper clipping. Since the thief is already under arrest, you guys can keep it. Hey, this guard here, haven't I seen him somewhere before? Pretty small, so it's kind of hard to see, but now that she mentions it... Newspaper clipping added to the court record. 
Ooh, that prosecutor. I really don't like that guy. The way he used our own evidence to do that to Mr. Delight. Yeah, I think he did it that way just because he knew it'd hurt more. That's what my gut tells me anyway. So, who is that Java-addicted masked maniac anyway? Prosecutor Gotto? He's quite the enigma, huh? The thing is, pal, I never even heard of the guy before. He just showed up one day at the prosecutor's office. Came out of nowhere. That's right, he said this was his first case as a prosecutor. And it's true, going to the records anyway. But... No way he's an amateur. He's an Iceman in court, a maverick that, give, that give, gives, gives, me, gives me goosebumps. Typo! Goosebumps? You? Yeah, I knew something was off about him, so I asked around. Nobody would talk to me, they all just turned the other way. Poor Detective Gumshoe, I had no idea you were so unpopular. Ah, uh, no, that's not what I meant. That Goto guy acts like he knows me and has a grudge against me. I get the feeling he's hiding some kind of dark secret. Okay, we do want to know more about Kane Bullard, so let's uh, ask about him. Detective Gumshoe, tell us more about Mr. Shane Bluebard. That's Kane Bullard, not Shane Bluebard, pal. Oh yeah, the, the victim in this case just doesn't make much of an impression on me. Well, you were the victim up until Mr. Bullard was found dead. Yeah, and his body wasn't discovered until this morning. Anyway, we don't have any enough information yet. Can you help us out? Sorry, I'm actually a little confused myself. For some reason, I'm just blabbing like an idiot right now. Okay, Nick. Now is our chance to get more info about the victim, so hurry up and ask. Let's go. The victim. Can you tell us some more about Mr. Bullard? He was the CEO of KB Security, right? What kind of company is it anyway? Well, the company basically sends security teams out to buildings to guard them. Mr. Bullard must have had the chance to learn a lot of secrets during this kind of work. Oh, and? And, I don't know how to put this, but the guy was kind of a money grubber. Really? Me too, I just love money, I can't ever get enough! Please stop leaning in towards me like that. You aren't getting to my wallet. Anyway, it looks like he did some pretty shifty stuff to earn his millions. I mean, yeah, you earned millions, that's pretty shifty. Oh, so that's my problem, I need to be shiftier. Let me go already. Apparently he was involved in selling trade secrets between rival companies. Ooh, that's pretty dirty and underhanded. Yeah, oh, KB Security used to head security operations against Mask to Maske. What, really? Yeah, and after screwing up so many times, the company's reputation really took a nosedive. So it really was Bullard who sent Ron the blackmail letter, huh? Hmm... Maybe... Uh, do I have all the things I need to ask about? We have the list. Remanon, Crown of Gungora, Left Hand of Hades, Walk of Regina... Um... Yeah, I think I have all the evidence we need. Hmm... From this room, anyway. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know if you noticed anything, but I had to leave the room momentarily, pause the recording. Uh, anyway, uh, so we want to go to the security room and talk to the guard in charge of the emergency buzzer, because the fact that it didn't go off is a little weird. October 13th, KB Security, Security Guard Office. Wow, this is really something else. For a security guard office, it sure doesn't feel very secure. KB security guard. Uh-oh, I just remembered. Larry might be. Hey Nick, what's up? Oh god. Ugh, so he is here. Yo, how's it hanging, dude? You got my sweet little Maya with you too. Hi, Larry. Here I was, working my fingers to the bone. And he walks an angel. I've got no problems with the daytime date, it's all good. No, that's not what we're here for. We're investigating the Bullard murder case. Huh? Oh yeah, that's right, you're a lawyer, aren't you? He's so hopelessly clueless. Well, if it's about the murder case, boy have I got some good info for you. Really? What is it? Hmm. Well, I don't mind sharing with my sweet little Maya. But Nick here is a different story. 
But, Larry, I thought you two were old school buddies. That was then and this is now. So, what's this good info you were talking about, Larry? Hey, oh my god, a pro! I can't just give away information for free! You want to bribe? I thought professionals were more... I don't know... honest? Can you talk to him, Maya? Larry, tell us already! What's the good info? Hey, I like that. This kitten has got some claws. What? God, Larry's gross. Okay, you really want to know? Yes, yes, so tell me! Okay, so the thing is, Ron Delight was an employee here. And naturally, since I'm a pro, I looked into his background. Follow me? Yes, you're a pro, I follow you. Go on. Well, one year ago, Ron Delight was fired. And there was no warning at all, it just happened all of a sudden. I know this is a small company, but I think that was pretty awful. I guess he must have done something bad to have gotten fired like that. Like, maybe skipping out of work to go pick up hot chicks or something. No, that's just you. So, what is it like to be a part-time security guard? Let me tell you, it's tough. Well, you know me, I get by alright, I guess. First, I have to keep my eye on those monitors, all the time. Monitors? There are security cameras set in each room around the building. It's really hard, sometimes I feel like my eyes are gonna fall out. Oh. And if I say something suspicious, I have to contact one of the teams. What teams? The security teams for this company. They're supposedly the best in the business. But I'm no amateur either, so if it's something small, I don't bother calling them. So in other words, you basically watch TV screens all day long. You were in this office when the murder took place, weren't you? Well, why do you say that? This is just a part-time job for me, and I can't operate the equipment, and I'm dumb. <laughs> Even if it is part-time and you are dumb, you're still in charge of security here. Hey, give me a break! Don't try to pin the whole thing on me! That's not fair, Nick! Huh? I don't think you can expect someone like him to take any responsibility. Anyway, the point is you were here that night, right? <gasps> what a twist. Oh no, I knew something smelled bad, and it was the butts after all. Well, it was like I always say, that was then and this is now, okay? Looks like I'm gonna have to break his psyche locks after all. I don't think we have the evidence we need to do that. We may need to come back. Uh, maybe we do, though? I'm not sure. I think I need to have a little look around and see what else I can find. Let's go to the... Uh, back to the hideout? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Light, you're pretty. October 13th, detention center, visitor's room. I already told you, it's not me! A sad, pitiful whine that tapers into silence. Sounds like they're interrogating Mr. Delight right now. Man, we don't have enough time as it is. Yeah, well, I guess the police are going crazy just like we are. Yesterday they thought he was just a thief, but now they got a murder case on their hands. I guess you're right. That guard over there looks a bit on edge too. Come on, we'll just have to come back later. Okay, let's go check out some other place, Nick. Uh, let's visit... Um, Atme's agency? I don't know if there's anything left here. October 13th, Atme Detective Agency. Whoa, this place is literally crawling with cops. Ugh, disgusting. Well, what did you expect? Now they know he was actually masked to mask, eh? This must be incredibly embarrassing for them, don't you think? Yeah, I guess they're trying to make up for it by tearing the place apart. Hey, I just noticed. Gumshoe is nowhere to be seen. Well, he is a homicide detective. He's probably working on the murder case. I think I was supposed to come here before going to the murder scene so that I would get these in the other order. Oh well. <laughs> but wasn't he in charge of the Mask to Mask investigation all the way up to yesterday? Well, a murder case is a lot more exciting, isn't it? He'd say something like, There's nothing like a good murder case, pal. Points for the quality of the impression, but I'm not sure Gumshoe has bloodlust, Maya. Um, yeah, there's no reason to be here, it's just cops. Disgusting. October 13th, Lordly Taylor, Main Exhibition Hall. 
Treasures of Turin exhibit is all ruined now. Maya. I'm sorry, it's just so sad. This was our big chance for everyone to learn about spirit channeling. Maybe I can cheer her up somehow. Well, now that we've got the sacred urn back, maybe they can reopen it? R really? Sure, maybe we can label it the urn of Master Masque's desires. That would probably attract a lot of attention. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's brilliant, Nick! We could clean up and be filthy rich! Woohoo! <laughs> Wow, that was surprisingly easy. <laughs> uh, we'll check the basement as well. I think there might be clues down here. October 13th, Lordly Taylor, Basement Warehouse. Oh, it's you, Mr. Wright. Miss Andrews, what's she still hanging around down here for? Um, so, how is it going? What about the sacred urn? The urn? Oh, that. It's been taken care of already. What do you mean, oh, that? Taken care of? Do you mean it's been found? Yes, it was brought in during the trial today. Wow, really? You really are the greatest, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright had nothing to do with it. It was Master Masque's wife that found it. Well, anyway, I'm I'm so relieved. Oh, look at that happy little girl, little baby. I love you, Adrian. I love her so much. She's so precious. Okay, we need to look at some more of this stuff. It's, it is important. That pathetic looking wooden box. Ah! That's the box that had the sacred urn in it. Don't touch it. There may be clues to the thief's identity on it. Uh, I worked so hard to make that box. I think we've already seen this. Yeah. Yeah, we have already seen that. It hasn't been updated because we already know the thief's identity. Which is kind of weird. I just heard all about it on the news. So that detective was actually the thief all along? Wait, wait, she didn't hear about the sacred urn on the news, but she did hear about, all right, whatever. So that detective was actually the thief all along. It looks that way right now. It, it's my fault. I'm the one who ended up hiring Damasque to guard the treasures. Don't blame yourself. You were just doing your job. Hey Nick, if she wants to apologize, you should let her. So, when was it that you hired Detective at me again? About 20 days ago. And when was it that Master Masque's calling card arrived? That was about 10 days ago. So he sent a calling card to the very place he was hired to guard. I guess that's it then. Detective at me must have really wanted the sacred urn after all. I guess so. What? So Master Masque m murdered someone as well? Well, that's how things look right now. Y yes but I thought that he was here stealing the urn at the time. Well, we're talking about a criminal mastermind, so anything is possible. Nick, let's get down to business already. On the night of the theft, did you notice anything suspicious about Detective Atme? No, I couldn't have. After all, he was hidden the entire time. I never even caught a glimpse of him. He claims that's the way he always operates. That's just what he says so he can have an alibi while he commits the thefts himself. Yeah, he was caught in the crime scene photo dressed up as Mask de Masque pretty well. I'm so glad that you got your sacred urn back. Yes, but there's still something that bothers me about it. What is it? I'm not exactly sure, but somehow the urn that came back seems different. Really? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Miss Andrews? No, I don't know anything. Why would I? Oh. <gasps> she knows something. Psyche locks? What do you think this means, Nick? It means the person that holds the secret to the mystery of the sacred urn is our very own Miss Andrews. We don't have the evidence we need for that yet, so we're going to have to wait. Um, I think we can have a look around here, though. It looks to me like it's been dry for several days. There's something suspicious about this paint mark. The bottom left part of it is shaped oddly and it's shocking pink. I don't see how the colour of the paint is in any way important. Uh, maybe this one? The statue wasn't where it was where it is now when we first came here, right? Yeah, it was right next to the door, wasn't it? Well, if someone moved it, it was probably Master Masque. 
Maybe he didn't like being watched by Mr. Gami while he sold the urn. Hey, cut it out! You're giving me, th you're giving me the creeps with that kind of talk. Okay, no. Uh, we do need a bit more evidence, but we can't get it yet, I think. Uh, so we'll have to wait a bit. Uh, I think if we go back to our office, there might be something. Nope, not yet. Not yet. Um, I talk to you about everything? Yes. I think maybe we can break the psycho lock on, um, that Larry has. Let's, let's give it a try. We haven't got any more evidence, but we might be able to do it. The Night of the Crime. On the night of the crime, were you working hard like you were supposed to? What? Huh? Uh, 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 of course I was. Why wouldn't I have been? But didn't you sneak out of work just yesterday to go see Mr. Light? Ah, oh, but that was that, and this is this. Is there any chance that you snuck out of work last night too? Never. I didn't sneak out. I tell you what, I'll even bet you a dollar. A dollar, wow. Now that's confidence. What's with that drenched in the rain puppy look on your face? Do you have evidence that I left my position, or are you just pulling my chain? The evidence that Larry was not manning his station when the murder happened is... It's the wallet, right? Because he found it. This wallet, you know about this, right? I've never seen it before. I've never seen it before. Liar, you hand-delivered this wallet to Mr. Light just yesterday. Give me a break, you can't expect me to remember every little thing that happens. Well, I do expect you to remember something that happened just yesterday. What time was it when you found this wallet? I guess it was around 1 in the morning on the first floor of our company building. 1 o'clock in the morning? That's right. In other words, Larry, at the time of the mur- th At the time the of the murder- Typo! You were away from the security guard office. Ah! Y yeah, but, but there's, there's something you didn't think about. What's that? My shift that day didn't start until 10pm. The murderer might have snuck in before then. What do you mean by that? If the murderer had snuck in before 10pm, then it wasn't my fault. It was the fault of the guy whose shift was before mine. Why do I have the feeling that he still doesn't get the seriousness of this? Listen up, Larry. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the killer snuck into the CEO's office after 10pm during your shift. Uh, the ID card record, right? Yes. Larry, when you use this key card, does it leave a record? Yeah, it does. But I can't show the record to just anyone, you know. That key card data was already made public in the trial today. What? I didn't know that. Any kind of request for info like that is supposed to go through me. Boy, does that sound a bit arrogant coming from a part-time guard. Anyway, according to the data, the do door to the CEO's office was opened with this card. Furthermore, it was most definitely used at 1am at the time of the murder. No way! Yes, someone used this to get into the CEO's office. <coughs> Sorry. That happened at 1am on the night of the crime, right in the middle of your shift. Ooh. Larry, you can't duck your responsibility this time. Yeah, no. Unlock successful. Ooh, I knew it. It's all my fault. It's my fault. The boss was killed. My fault. Larry, there was nothing I could do. I have important issues to deal with too, man. What happened that night anyway? Uh, my donna happened. Huh? Your Donna? I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, my Donna called and said, I have to talk to you right away. So I went to see her and he was standing right there next to her. Um, who was? Her new boyfriend. It was like some horrible joke. Before I knew what was going on, the guy socked me right in the kisser. Normally I'm the one that does the punching. Isn't that right, Maya? I I yeah? So is that why you left the security guard office? 
I'm sorry. It's all my fault. How can I ever make up for it, Nick? What can I do? What? <laughs> He's curled up on the floor, crying like a baby. Oh boy. Nick! Is there anything I can do? Anything. Just name it. I'll do whatever I have to do to make up for it. I swear I will. Larry. Hey Nick, as long as he's offering, why don't you show him the evidence we've got? She's right. Maybe we'll get at least one bit of useful information out from him. Nick. Okay. Present. Um, the buzzer in the CEO's office is directly connected to this room, right? That's right. Just like my heart is connected to yours, Maya. Huh? Go ahead, Maya. Press the buzzer in your heart. I promise I'll come running to your rescue like the professional guard I am. Wow. That was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. I try. You think you could tell us about the buzzer now? Yes, please. Please tell us. Okay. I guess so. Prepare to be wowed. Um, I accidentally pressed the buzzer earlier. Yeah, I heard it. So that was you, huh? You're a security guard, aren't you? Why didn't you come to the CEO's office? Well, this is the third floor of the basement. The CEO's office is on the first floor. I thought it would be a good idea to, um, adopt a wait-and-see approach. Plus, there's a police detective here, right? I just didn't think it was necessary. It's as if he's trying to win an award for the laziest person on the planet. Um, let's get back to talking about the night of the murder, okay? Is it true that the buzzer didn't go off that night? There must be a record, right? You must have, a, you must have had a look at it, right? Of course I did, and I couldn't possibly have made a mistake either. Do you think you could take just one more look for me, pretty please? Oh, okay. <laughs> I just can't say no to you, Maya. What do you think, Nick? He's probably right. I don't think even Larry could make a mistake like that. Wow! What is it? What's wrong? Uh, I made a mistake. <laughs> huh? But but how? It can't be. It's impossible. Okay, enough already. What about the records? That night, it went off just once in the morning at around 1 a.m. <gasps> 1am? Th that's when the m murder happened. R really? Are you serious? That's terrible. It can't be. Buzzer record to the court record. That's important information, y'all. <laughs> we need that. Uh, we'll talk about, to you about, about all we need to. Um, I think now we might be able to get the, the urn back if we go back to our office. Nope. We do need the urn back, though. Okay, here we go. October 13th, Detention Center. Visitor's room. Ah, uh, Mr. Wright. Mr. Delight, did they finish, her in finish their interrogation? Yes, but please don't leave me alone anymore. Mr. Delight, you lied to us before, didn't you? Well, uh, you see... On the same night the sacred urn was stolen from Lordly Taylor Department Store, a blackmail letter you got summoned you to KB security to hand over some money. And then, that's where the CEO, Kane Bullard, was murdered. But there's only one Ron Delight, am I right? So the only question is, where were you that night? This time I want to hear the whole truth, your life depends on it. Uh, okay. Mr. Delight, do you still insist that you were masked to mask, eh? Isn't that what I've been saying since yesterday? That was a quick response. Tell me about it. To be honest, it's starting to get irritating. B but listen, Mr. Delight. At the trial today, we learned the true identity of the thief, didn't we? <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. I guess it's true. I wasn't the one who stole that urn. Of course not. After all, you were at KB security at the time. So then the person dressed up as Mask the Maske in this photo. It's gotta be Detective Atme. 
So that night, you didn't go to Little Bee Tail, you went to KB Security, right? Yes, I went to KB Security at the time the blackmail note said I should. Alright, what happened next? Well, I used to work there, so I knew where the CEO's office was. I knocked, but there was no answer. So then I used the keycard to unlock the door. That's probably when he dropped his wallet. When I went into the CEO's office, someone was in there. Someone? Then suddenly they bashed me over the head. Bam! Was it Kane Bullard that hit you? I don't know. The person ran away while I was still stunned. When I came to my senses, the sight I saw left me speechless. The dead body of the CEO was right there in front of me. I thought I'd die myself. Anyway, I thought I should do something with the body. So... So that's why you put it in the safe? Yes, that's right. I used to be the chief of one of the security teams, so I knew how to open it. Okay, and what did you do after that? Well, I got out of there, for starters. I was the one who set up the security cameras in that building. So I knew how to avoid being spotted by them. Nick. All of a sudden, Mr. Delight kinda sounds like a murderer to me. Please don't say that. Mr. Delight, is it true that one year ago, you were forced to quit KB Security? Uh, uh how did you... Uh, I'm begging you, please don't tell Desi. Please. Don't worry, we haven't told anyone yet. Whew, thank goodness. Uh, no, I, um, I suppose I'll have to tell her sometime. Why have you been hiding it from her anyway? Desi would despise me if she ever found out I was living a life of crime. A criminal, a thief. She'd never forgive me. My marriage would be over. Um, she said that she's fine, that thieves are alright, she just doesn't like them pretending to be ace detectives. You're not pretending, you're very clear about the fact that you're a thief. I think you're fine. <laughs> Knowing that, why did you become a thief in the first place? Because Desi spends money like it's water. There's no job in the world that could bring in enough money. Except being a thief. At least, that's what I thought anyway. So he became Master Masque for Desiree, huh? Hmm... Uh, can we ask him about anything? Uh, the buzzer, maybe? The buzzer went off just once around the time that Bullard was killed. Oh! Th that's scary! Do you know anything about that, Mr. Delight? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't. Well, I'm not surprised by how clueless he is anymore. Okay, so he didn't set off the buzzer or anything. Hey, this is an article about my debut heist. Boy, that was a tough one. Before I knew it, they were hot on my trail. But Mask de Masque, he must have gotten away, right? It says in the article that he disappeared. That's right, I got a sudden burst of inspiration. I hid my Mask de Masque costume in a nearby plastic bucket. Then I quickly changed into my security guard uniform. Pretty clever, eh? Wow, awesome! Hey, hold the phone. The guard in this photo, is this you, Mr. Delight? He, that's right, nice tree if I do say so myself. Nice and easy to figure out. Even pearls could see through that in a heartbeat. Newspaper clipping it, updated in the court record. But as you might expect, Detective Atme found the disguise. He truly deserves the title of Ace Detective. Detective Atme found the Master Masque disguise? Hmm, that's interesting. Yes, and I heard that he brought it home with him. So, that's it. That's when Atme got his hands on this. Thanks to that, I got the chance to remake my costume. That must have been really time consuming, huh? Yes, it took quite a while to complete. Anyway, a few days after that, I received the first of the blackmail letters. B blackmail letters? Y you got them starting when? Tell me more, now! Uh, hey, calm down. Don't get so worked up. This blackmail letter, is this the first one you got? No, of course not. But this is the first one that ever called me out to a specific location. So, did you start receiving blackmail letters after this incident? Yes, just a few days after the tier of Eminon heist. That first letter, it said, I know you did it. So, someone found out about your true identity? Just like that? 
Ah, it's not easy being a master thief, you know. I've got proof that it was you, so give up, it went on to say. So in the end, I had to give up the treasure I went through all that trouble to steal. Is that right? Hey, hang on a second. What do you mean you had to give it up? Oh, don't worry. After I put the jewel in the safe deposit box the letter specified, someone sent me $10,000. No one said anything about me being worried, you know. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. Plans? What are these plans you're talking about? There are instructions on how to steal a crown or a painting or some other rare treasure. They showed security blind spots, escape routes, and even suggested training methods. So you mean that the one who planned the heists wasn't you? No, it wasn't. I only planned the very first one. After that, I received plans from some very kind person. Incredibly detailed plans. It sounds like Mr. Delight is thankful to the person that was blackmailing him. So Ron Delight was masked to mask after all? But... Someone else is behind the thefts. Someone who planned them all out in detail. All I had to do was deposit the treasures I stole into the safe deposit box. Then I just waited for the cash to come in the mail. Could you try not to look so gleeful about it? So you went after the sacred urn because of one of those plans, too? Well, see, truth is, I've never seen the urn. All I did was follow the instructions and steal what I was told to steal. Mr. Delight, is everything you've just told me the truth? Yes. B but please don't tell Desi, okay? Ron's testimony added to the court record. Ron, before we go, there's one more thing I want to ask you. I yes? But please don't hurt me. Mr. Kane Bullard, do you swear that it wasn't you who killed him? I yes, of course. I could never... I'm not lying. All I did was hide his body in the safe. But then I was afraid they'd discover what I did, so I turned myself in yesterday. Um, why? Well, if the judge had ruled that I was guilty of robbery, then I'd have an alibi, right? Hmm, I guess so. You're really clever, Mr. Delight. I guess I have no choice but to take Mr. Delight at his word. Uh, that's Pearl, right? Mystic Maya! Hey! Pearly! I'm back! Hey, Pearls. So, have, what have you been up to this whole time? The sacred urn, Mr. Nick. I took it back to Curain Village to have it examined. And? And? What did you find out? Well, there's no need to worry. They said it's the real urn. Whew. That's a relief. I was really worried. But there's one small problem. Problem? Um, these cute little pink splotches. They said that it's paint, and that they were put on the urn recently. Why are we talking about the pink splotches again? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? We've got to find out how they got there. That's the big deal. Yes, Mr. Nick, we've got to find out how they got there. Uh, okay, okay, we'll go find out how they got there. But please don't forget about me. Sacred urn refiled into the court record. Okay, we have the urn now. Uh, the urn is all we need to uh, find out what is being hidden by Miss Andrews. October 13th, Lordly Taylor, Basement Warehouse. Oh, Pearl, how nice to see you. Uh, hello there. I haven't seen you around lately. What have you been up to? Well, actually, I was having this urn examined. Oh, I see. Maybe if we take another good look at this urn, we can figure out the mystery of what actually happened here. Nick, let's look around one more time. Okay, now we have to examine those bits and pieces again. It looks to me like it's been dry for several days. There's something suspicious about this paint mark. Yeah, we've heard this already. I'll just fast forward till the new bit. This is the same colour as the paint splotches on the urn! So then the question is, what's the cause of the odd shape? Let's look around here carefully, Mr. Nick. Probably this box. This box, there's something about it that's bothering me. That's the box that the sacred urn was in. It looks like there's some pink paint on it too. And it's definitely the same colour as the stuff on the urn. I think I know how the paint got on it now. Alright, let's investigate again, Nick. Urn box added to the court record. We have to go look at this again, I think, yeah. 
And we got double days. Mr. Nick, could it be that this odd shape is... Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is it. Ah, that's the box the Sacred Urn was in. If you look here, there's a little bit of paint on the, on the box as well. Wow, you're right. Look, it matches. What is it, Mr. Nick? This is all turning out exactly as I thought it would. Paint marks added to the court record. I think it's all starting to become clear. We're that much closer to solving the mystery of what happened to the urn. Okay, I believe that's all the things we need, so let's just have a quick look. Paint marks, urn box, sacred urn. Yeah, that, that's all we're gonna need. Present. The Sacred Urn. Miss Andrews, do you know anything about the Sacred Urn? Do I know anything? I'm in charge of the entire treasure exhibit. The urn that was submitted before the court today. It's obviously not the same urn as before. Well, that's... that's, um, true. Maybe it isn't the same. It could be... it could be a fake. A fake. You're the one who said it wasn't the same, so that's the most obvious explanation. Do you have any evidence the urn that was submitted at the trial was genuine? Yes, we've had it checked out by Curane Village. Sorry to break it to you, but the urn is the genuine article. Pearls went back to Curane Village and had it examined. I is that right? That's nice, but I don't see how... What she discovered was that the urn had been broken. Again. D did you say... again? Yes, it was broken once a, once, a year ago. And now it looks like the same thing has happened. And quite recently, too. R recently? Are you saying that this urn was broken recently? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why do you think it was broken recently? How do you know? Okay, the urn says army. The photographs that you took of the urn for the exhibit, which is back here, says I am. This poster. It was made recently, right? Poster? Ah, the poster for the exhibit! At a time when this photo was taken, the urn said, I am on it. But now, for some mysterious reason, it says, Army. When the urn was fixed, the letters were transposed. Ah! I am? What does that even mean? I don't know anything about that. I wasn't even there when the photo for this poster was taken. That was a mistake. Now, tell the truth. Ah, wait. Four? Even if the urn was broken, I had nothing to do with it. Huh? Y yes, that's it. it. must have been one of the people at the photo shoot. They probably dropped it. I'm sure that's what happened. Hmm. Looks like she's not going to give up that last psyche lock so easily. Do you have any proof the urn was broken here at Lordly Taylor? Uh, yeah, actually. Well, Miss Andrews? Um, what is this supposed to mean? This urn has these pretty little pink, paint, pink paint splotches on it. Mm. And there's some on the box the urn was stored in, too. No matter how you look at it, the paint seems to be exactly the same, wouldn't you say? So, what does that prove? That the urn was dropped along with the box. That's when they both got paint on it. Are you with me so far? Y yes. The rest of the story is obvious. This box was dropped right here in Lordly Taylor's basement warehouse. If I can prove that, it means the urn was broken here too. So can you prove that? Can you prove that box was dropped here in the basement warehouse? Yes. <laughs> ah! I think you already know where I'm going with this, don't you? Y yes more or less. There's pink paint spotted on the floor and walls of this basement warehouse. There's an odd shape imprinted into a part of the paint stain, am I right? Y yes. If you put this box into the impression in the paint, you can see it fits perfectly. Which means this box was dropped right over there. And that is when the urn was broken. Your name does you justice, Mr. Wright. Oh, sweetie. I'm so sorry. I was the one, the one who broke the urn. Boy, does this make me feel like some sort of evil school teacher. I'm a terrible person. Not only did I break it, but I tried to hide what I did. Well, that's not so hard to understand, is it, Pearly? N no, not at all. I 
I noticed how noticed how she feels. It happened about two weeks ago, just after the poster photo was taken. On the same day the urn arrived here, I thought I'd put it away down here for safekeeping. I was carrying it in the box. When I tripped on a paint can and lost my balance, the box I was carrying crashed to the ground. Crash. I heard a terrible noise and I thought my heart was going to stop. Fearing the worst, I opened the lid of the box and that's when it happened. The broken pieces of the urn fell out of the box and landed right in the paint. I... I... I was in shock and let out a huge scream. Hmm. I can totally see how that could have happened. <laughs> sure you can. Yeah, as clumsy as she is, I'm sure Maya understands. Well, I knew it was the most important treasure in all of Kurain Village, so I tried as hard as I could to fix it. But fortunately, the shards were pretty big. And that's when the I Am got changed to Army? I didn't know how it was originally written, but any sane person fixing it would have assumed it said Army. A any sane person? Really? Oh, pearls. She said she wasn't very good at spelling. Oh, sweetie. Anyway, I put the urn into the storeroom and no one had seen it since then. Sake we updated in the court record. But there's something I don't get. When we first came here, I didn't see any paint stains. Well, that's because it was so ugly and embarrassing. I used the golden statue to cover it. The army face statue. Aha! The first time that we came down here, it was on the night that the sacred urn was stolen. Mr. Nick. There were no paint marks on the walls or floor of the warehouse when we were here. Well, there's a good reason for that. On the day of the crime, around noon, that golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. A and? I realised that the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. That's why I put it where you first saw it. I see. Now it makes perfect sense. Um, but there's still one thing I find strange. What is it, Pearls? Sorry, Pearl. The day after the urn was stolen, we came here again. At that time, the statue had been moved and the paint was clearly visible. She's right about that. Well, Miss Andrews? Huh? What? I, uh, I don't know anything about that. I placed it there to cover the, cover the paint, so why would I move it again? Well then, who was it? Who would have done it and why? On the day before the theft, the statue was definitely closer to the door. Then the next day, it was moved, but why? Army Faye's golden statue updated in the court record. It looks like there's some connection between the sacred urn and the murder case. Why? Why do you think so, Nick? Because that night, the real thief, Ronda Light, was at KB Security. So then why did another Masked Damasque show up here? A lot of different things are pointing to one undeniable fact. One undeniable fact? The murder trial is starting tomorrow, but... It looks like that thief is going to be making another appearance. To be continued. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Next time, we start the murder trial, and it looks like that thief is going to be making another appearance. <laughs> Bye!